welcome to worship on this Sunday when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and the power of resurrection life as well in our own lives. Thank you for joining us for worship with St. Andrew's United Church in Sudbury, Ontario. We are so happy that you joined us. While we are not physically together, we are connected spiritually. Now, if you're just dropping in to worship for the first time this morning, you might prepare yourself in two ways for this Easter worship. First, I invite you to find an instrument or a noisemaker to make a joyful noise when the time comes for me to ask you to play. An option would be your hands. You don't happen to have your own. We have some here. Also, we invite you to get some type of bread, a rice cake or a muffin, something to eat, and any kind of juice you might have. It can all be blessed. We are going to try to share in communion this Sunday, a virtual communion with juice. We're going to use orange juice this morning because that's what we have, and any kind of bread. You can click pause to go and find those items if you need to get them. Very briefly, if you would like to be a partner of St. Andrew's to support the ministries of this community of faith, there are probably three ways you can help. First of all, and maybe most importantly, is to pray. Prayer is really important. We need your support. We also welcome checks, and we offer a chance for you and a contact for uh, sending checks to and a phone number. Or, next uh, slide, Torin, or you could visit our St. Andrew's website, and it looks like this, and this is how you click on the Donate button, and it takes you to Canada Helps, and we're really grateful for the people who helped us put up that Donate button and give you a chance to be a supporter of this important ministry we're doing in pandemic times. Now, let us prepare for worship together. Let us become connected by God's love as we enter this worship. Let us first connect with the land on which we worship. This land, wherever we are, we know that we, there were caretakers of the land for thousands of years before us, perhaps even 10,000 years, long before the settlers came to this land and called it Canada. We at St. Andrews, we physically worship on the traditional lands of the Wanapitae First Nation and the Atikamekshing Anishinaabek. Do you know what traditional territory you inhabit? Give thanks to the creator and your indigenous neighbors of the particular First Nation that are neighbors of yours. If you don't know the traditional territory on which you worship, go to nativeland.ca and you can see the graphic on your screen, nativeland-land.ca. They have a wonderful interactive map that will help you. We give thanks for this land and we pray that we might all work towards true reconciliation and just sharing one day. As you prepare for worship, take in a slow breath, a deep breath. Let it out. Breathe slowly and thoughtfully and notice your breathing. Notice how you're feeling right now. Connect with your body parts that are relaxed, but some might be tense. Just notice, connect. Give thanks for your body and all that your body does for you. As my family lights the Christ candle now, let us hear the words of Isaiah. Isaiah said this, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Welcome creator, welcome. Jesus. Will you join with me in the responsive call to worship, which is on your screen? Christ has risen. Christ, Christ has, has risen, risen indeed. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Indeed, Christ is risen. And with Christ, we rise in hope, hope of the future, hope of possibilities, hope of a, a life ahead. Let us pray. O great eternal spirit, earth maker 
pain bearer, life giver. Be with us in this moment of resurrection where all things seem possible, where all hope seems probable. We have come from a place of anxiety and fear and out into the light of hope. We dance this day knowing that we are working as hard as possible to bring about systematic changes in our world. The empty tomb has taught us that we all have a part to play. We all have the potential to change the narrative and we are all integral to understanding the health of community. We are following the way of justice and now God dance with us. Amen. Amen. Let's join our voices singing exuberantly, Jesus Christ is risen today. This is the moment where we often spend time with our kids and our kids at heart in the congregation. And I'm thinking that there's probably many of you at home who have had different kinds of Easter rituals that you may enjoy, whether it's Easter egg hunts, those chocolate Easter eggs, or in a few churches that I've served, we've hidden a hallelujah egg over Lent. And then on Easter morning, the kids will hunt for it in the sanctuary and the finder of the egg goes yelling down the aisle, Hallelujah! Right now, we're gonna make some noise because on social media, Catherine and I have both noted that throughout COVID-19, this outbreak, people have been encouraged to go out in the front of their houses at a certain time to make noise in support of the courageous healthcare workers that are putting their lives on the line. So we're gonna make a joyful noise right now with our noisemakers, a party of noise to celebrate that Jesus has risen and to support all the frontline workers, including those who are keeping essential services going in our community. God loves a joyful noise. Let's make a noise first. Then when we stop, 
will say, I'll say, Christ is risen, and you will respond, he is risen indeed. Okay, let's make a noise. We attracted the dog. Hi, Rebel. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. <laughs> and I don't know if we still have Tor in there, our director. I think we may have blown him away. Okay, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Okay, let's calm it down for Reverend Catherine. <laughs> A blessed Easter to all of you today. We have two readings this morning. The first reading is taken from Psalm 118. Let us listen for the wisdom of God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say his love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. And the gospel lesson today is taken from the very familiar passage from Matthew's gospel, chapter 28. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there, they will see me. And the response to the readings comes from Psalm 19. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Catherine. A little bit of excitement over here. So we're exuberant in the Legrand household listening to the news. So my friends, I want you to imagine for a moment the Marys, forlorn, arriving at the tomb, and then sudden shaking of the earth and an encounter with an angel. How must they have felt? Wonder? Maybe felt fear? When an angel in the Bible story says, don't be afraid, well, the person encountering that angel is probably pretty afraid. Couple that encounter with the meeting of Jesus outside the tomb, and you have one breathtaking morning. Having started in sadness, a surprising turn of events happens. In what might look like just another day defined by a virus, what holy surprises might be in store for you today. Look back in your mind's eye to the past week. Did you have any surprising, even joy-filled encounters that dispersed your sense of isolation and routine? Maybe it was a spontaneous driveway party or a phone call from someone who cares. 
This morning I heard on CBC radio an interview with a very elderly man who had, when he was a child, he contracted the Spanish flu. He spoke of being isolated high up in his house, but his father came home from a trip. He remembers his father climbing a ladder to the window of his room with a box of toys under his arm. He treasured for many years a fire engine from that box and remembers that moment almost more than any other moment in his life. The Easter story, the story of Jesus overcoming death is a reminder to always be open to God's surprises. These stressful times tempt us to expect death, but Christians are sometimes aptly referred to as Easter people. Right now, our families, our friends, our neighbors, even people we don't know very well, but meet on social media. Everyone we encounter needs more than ever generosity of spirit. The world needs Easter people, you and me. Embodying Christ's love in even the simple gestures, whether we share the good news stories we find on social media, or just pay attention to every moment in a day when we can be a blessing to somebody else. We are an Easter people, just like those Marys. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for the blessing of this resurrection story of Jesus and those Marys. Help us to pay attention to surprising moments filled with new life. It won't be easy, God, we know it daily isolation in our homes, news that seems to only talk about one thing. May we remember your surprise that you gave to those women and your disciples. May we always be looking for your surprising joy and wonder in our everyday lives. May we be your Easter people. Amen. Well, as we prepare for communion now, our virtual communion with your bread and wafer or muffin, bread, your juice, I invite you to think about the giftedness of this moment. Sure, we are separated today in our homes, but we are very much connected by modern technology. As you bring your communion elements to this table, I want you to consider yourself a gift. What gifts, skills, capacity to make a difference in this world has God planted in you in order for it to grow in you and to be shared with the world? In these strange times, our family, our friends, our very world needs our generosity of spirit and our sharing of our gifts. God's vision of transformation of this world depends on needs you and I. So let's sing as we prepare for communion. Let's join our voices. Now silence, now the peace. Let us pray. As we offer our gifts on this joyous morning, may we bring light to those in the shadows, laughter to all who mourn, 
and hope to those longing for life anew. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God's table today is not our traditional communion in the church sanctuary, but the table in front of you and in front of me, it is God's table where you are. Whether you break a cracker or a muffin or bread with me, what you are taking is just as much a communion element as bread. And whether it's grape juice or apple juice or your morning tea or water, it is God's cup of blessing in this moment. So if you don't have your elements to eat and drink in communion, I invite you to take a prayerful moment bringing it over to the table by your camera. Welcome to tables that are spread out across this community. Some of you will be sitting at uh, the family's antique table. Some of you may be sitting in your comfy chair with your lap as your table. Know that whatever, wherever you are this Sunday, you are at Christ's table. For Christ is in your heart and in your house. God, sustainer of all in our moments of deep fear, we praise and thank you that through the creating spirit of this earth and through your word, we are welcomed at this table in prayer, praise and thanksgiving. For the goodness of the earth, the space of creation, and the glory of redemptive powers, we praise your unending dancing spirit. Invite us now the call of your prophets, enlighten us with the knowledge of your disciples, and bring us into the place of understanding with all in your community. As we see that which is unseen, as we remind ourselves, which, as we remind ourselves of our faithful journey in this time of thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Amen. On the last night that Jesus spent with his friends, he took an age-old tradition of his people and transformed it into something new. He took bread, the staple food of his land, blessed and broke it and gave it to those around him saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. Take a moment and look at that bread or that food you have brought forward. After supper, he took a cup of wine common drink of his people and gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood. Each time you do this, remember me. By remembering Jesus in this way now, we claim our common heritage. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. God of great wisdom and greater love, you know that Christ's enduring love is not limited by walls, and you have taught us that we may be in community even when we cannot touch flesh to flesh. God of infinite time and space, let us not be bound by the understandings that we have put in place in our own lives. Instead, may we remind ourselves that your great creation is how we must commune on a daily basis. Help us build right relations with all of our relationships, even in the midst of the pandemic that we're facing. May the bread of belonging sustain us. May the cup of blessing nourish us. May we work to find refuge in the healing spirit that moves among us. And now we share together the prayer that Jesus taught his people. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Send, O covenant God, your Holy Spirit upon us and what we do here, 
that we and these gifts empowered by your spirit may become signs of shalom to one another and to all peoples of the earth. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours everywhere, now and forever. Amen. So I'm going to invite you to pick up your bread, whatever that bread happens to be, and I want you to break it, and I want you to share in this community banquet of God together. The bread of life offered for you. Amen. Amen. And I invite you now to pick up the cup of blessing. And may we as a community share in God's abundance together. The cup of blessing. Amen. Let's close this Easter worship by singing, Thine is the Glory. together to worship and we take with us the community that we find in this worship. Let us prepare to leave this sacred space that we have shared in this virtual space with the words of benediction from the Reverend Dr. Cliff Elliott. Go forth into the world with a daring and tender love. Go in peace. The world is waiting. And whatever you do, do it for love and in the spirit of Jesus, who is your Christ. And finally, in keeping with our practice, worshiping together from our homes, we're going to say together 
the words of our United Church moderator. Creator God, help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. Amen.